What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. That's me on the screen right there. And so this year, I've reviewed all the compact cars, essentially. I've test driven and reviewed the Civic, Corolla, and the Sentra. And because the Civic and Corolla is the natural rivalry here, I decided to switch it up and pin the Civic against the Sentra because I personally believe that the new Sentra being completely redesigned is actually a very good competitor for the Civic at this point. And so in this video, I am going to lay out the top 10 key differences between the Sentra and the Civic, and hopefully it will better help you guys make a decision. And by the way, there will be a clear winner announced at the end of this video, so make sure you watch till the end. And let's go ahead and get started with number 10 on the list. So number 10 on the list is going to be price. The simple comparison between the Sentra and the Civic. 2020 Civic LX being the bottom trim level starts at $20,650. 2020 Sentra S starts at $19,090. So therefore, the Sentra is going to start at a price of $1,560 less than the Civic. But at the other end of the spectrum there, if you were to spec out the very top trim level between the two, the 2020 Civic Touring comes in at $27,700. 2020 Sentra SR is going to start at $21,430. So when you're comparing those two, the Sentra is $6,270 less than the top trim level on the Civic. So therefore, Sentra is going to be winning the price comparison here, which puts us at one to nothing Sentra in the lead. Next comparison I have for you guys is going to be reliability. And so this is actually going to be an interesting comparison here. And this one may surprise you guys. Consumer Reports gives above average reliability to the Civic. Consumer Reports then gives above average reliability once again to the Nissan Sentra. So therefore we have a tie when it comes to reliability with Consumer Reports. So therefore I had to check out JD Power. The other reliability ranking that I usually go to when Consumer Reports has them at a tie basically. JD Power puts the Honda Civic, the 2020 Honda Civic sedan at a three out of five rating. By the way, with JD Power, this is predicted reliability here. Nissan Sentra, they put at a 3.5 out of five. So. Having said that, both do offer the same warranty being three year, 36,000 mile bumper to bumper, five year, 60,000 mile powertrain. But since the tie has to go to JD Power here, since Consumer Reports had them at the same, Sentra is actually going to win the reliability comparison thanks to JD Power, which puts Sentra in the lead two to nothing. Next comparison on my list is going to be acceleration, the fun one for me personally. Two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder comes standard with the Civic. That's gonna give you 158 horsepower, 138 pound feet of torque, sending you to 60 in approximately 8.2 seconds. Then on the other hand, the Nissan Sentra is going to give you once again, a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, 149 horsepower, 146 pound feet of torque, zero to 60, approximately eight seconds flat according to Motor Trend. That's the apple to apple comparison. And of course, with the Sentra only having one engine, I can't compare it to the Civic's other engine, but the Civic does indeed have another engine setup being a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder. This is going to be available on the EX trim level up which starts at $23,800 so it's priced well above the top trim level of the Sentra already there but if you wanted to go that route 174 horsepower 162 pound-feet of torque 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds which is pretty darn good for the Civic or really any compact car for that matter but this one therefore then becomes a more difficult one to judge so again when you're comparing apples to apples the Sentra is going to win that comparison but if you wanted to spend approximately $2,500 more to get the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine in the Civic, then obviously that would win because the Nissan Sentra at this time at least has nothing to compare it to. So since the Sentra won the base comparison and the Civic won the upgraded engine comparison because the Sentra doesn't have an upgraded engine, I do like that it's offered though. So I'm going to have to call this one a tie for that reason. Two to nothing, Sentra is still in the lead. Then for the number seven comparison on my list being braking because braking is equally important. This is important because if you're using this as a commuter car and you need to come to a quick stop in rush hour on your way to or from work, you're gonna wanna know that the brakes are going to actually make that happen for you because braking can differ substantially amongst compact cars, let me tell you. And so this is gonna be judged by the 60 to zero stopping distance in terms of feet. So let me first start with the Honda Civic. You get 11.1 inch ventilated front disc, 10.2 inch solid rear disc, 
As far as that 60 to zero distance goes, it comes in at a whopping 113 feet, which is actually very impressive for a compact car. When it comes to the Nissan Sentra, that gives you 11 inch ventilated front disc, 10.2 inch solid rear disc, pretty similar to the Civic there, coming in at a 60 to zero distance of 114 feet, one foot difference there. It is very, very similar cars when it comes to braking, let me tell you, but Civic does win this one by a hair, so that puts it at two to one, Sentra still in the lead. For number six on the list, we will be comparing seat comfort in terms of rear legroom at least and the options available for the seating. So when it comes to rear legroom first, the Civic gives you 37.4 inches, very impressive for a compact car. Nissan Sentra gives you 34.7 inches, switch the four and the seven, I suppose, which means the Civic does have a good bit more rear legroom than the Sentra is going to give you. And the other thing to go along with that, rear ventilation is going to come standard on the Civic, where it is not even offered on the Nissan Sentra. So therefore the rear passenger seat comfort clearly goes to the Civic. Then let's take a look at the seating option options because both will offer power adjustable front seats, both offer heated front seats, both offer leather front seats. The cool thing about Nissan's leather front seats though is that Nissan actually offers a quilted leather which is carried over essentially from their Nissan Maxima. A lot of times you will find quilted leather on vehicles like Audi for instance. They're known for that. They probably pioneered that really in the auto industry I would say. But still a very high-end leather look when it comes to the Nissan Sentra. Both do offer the same thing though in terms of options. So so since the Civic won the rear legroom comparison, this one again will have to go to the Civic, tying us all up at two to two. Then for number five on the list, we will be comparing fuel economy, a very important one, especially if this is going to be your commuter car. When it comes to the Honda Civic with that two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, 30 miles per gallon in the city, 38 on the highway. Comparing apples to apples, you will get 29 in the city, 39 on the highway for the Sentra for the S and SV trim levels. If you want with the SR trim level, the top trim level there, you're gonna come in at 28 in the city, 37 on the highway. So if you're gonna be doing more city driving, perhaps the Civic is your better bet there. But if you're going to be doing more highway driving, if you go with the S and SV trim levels for the Sentra, that's gonna give you better MPGs. But again, the Civic has that extra engine option being the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. If you were to go that route, spending a little bit more money there. But if you did that, 32 in the city, 42 on the highway. And either of these engines, whichever way you go, will take regular unleaded fuel, the cheap stuff, 87 octane essentially there. So since you get better city MPGs with the Civic, and since the highway number was kind of split, depending upon the trim level that you go with, I'm going to have to give this one to the Civic because the fact that the upper engine choice does give you better MPGs there as well. Three to two Civic is in the lead. Now let's go ahead and take a look at cargo space. And this is a pretty important one when it comes to compact cars. The Honda Civic is gonna give you 15.1 cubic feet, good bit there. Nissan Sentra gives you 14.3 cubic feet. Either car that you go with gives you a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for definitely a good bit of space with either setup that you go with. But Civic is going to edge out the win here once again, giving our tally at four to two. Honda Civic is breaking away here. Number three on the list is going to be interior quality. And again, this one may surprise you guys. Power moonroof is available for both, dual zone climate control available for both. However, with the climate control, I did wanna say the three circular air vents found in the Nissan Sentra, the air vents found front and center, very reminiscent of an Audi-esque type of setup or even Mercedes-Benz is known for doing those three circular air vents, kind of reminiscent of a fighter jet. That's where they originally got that from, but I love that style air vents. It looks very high in there. Leather wrap steering wheel available for both. The Sentra actually gives you a sporty flat bottom steering wheel, whereas the Civic does not. That's pretty cool. Also, a heated steering wheel is available on the Sentra where it is not available on the Civic, which is kind of surprising considering how much more pricey the Civic actually is. So that was pretty interesting. When it comes to leather seating, again, the Nissan Sentra gives you quilted leather at a price of $23,655. Leather seating for the Civic, you are going to have to bump that up to $25,000 if you wanted to go with the leather seating there. 
Infotainment screen, as far as that goes, it's placed high up on the dash if you were to go with the Sentra like Audi does, for instance. However, with the Civic, it's kind of integrated into the dash. So essentially, in the end, what I'm trying to get at is the Sentra offers more things that the Civic just does not, like quilted leather, a flat bottom steering wheel, heated steering wheel, and overall interior quality in the end, I actually have to give this one without a doubt to the Nissan Sentra. And so that now puts our tally at four to three. Civic is still in the lead. And for a number two comparison, another very important one here comes down to safety. And so let me first start with IIHS. And so both the Sentra and the Civic will both be an IIHS top safety pick, which means they're both extremely safe vehicles right off the bat. But both of them do have to come equipped with LED headlights in order to get that safety rating. And we'll say that blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert comes standard on the Sentra. If you wanted to get that same thing, you will have to go with the EX trim level and up, spend $25,000 to get it on the Civic. And that's gonna essentially be available via Honda Lane Watch. They have a little different setup to the blind spot monitoring system there. But standard safety features on both, you get a ton of advanced safety features either way you go, including forward collision warning, lane departure warning, automatic emergency braking, just to name a few. And again, both are very safe vehicles, but the key difference here is the Nissan Sentra earned that top safety pick for $6,270 less. And I came to that because only the top trim levels of both the Civic and the Sentra actually will get those LED headlights. So since the Sentra is so much more inexpensive than the Civic, when it comes to the top trim levels at least, and that blind spot monitor actually comes standard for every trim level of the Sentra, as opposed to just the EX $25,000 trim level and up, I am going to have to give this one yet again to the Sentra, tying us up once again at four to four. And so for my last comparison to draw the winner in this comparison, it is going to come down to handling and ride quality. And so let me start with both come standard with an independent strut type front suspension, independent multi-link rear suspension, which is brilliant for the Sentra because it didn't used to be that way. They just brought back the independent rear suspension for the 2020 model year, so that's great. Both offer good ride quality. I remember saying that in both of my reviews, which by the way, I'll leave a link to both individual reviews at the end of this video. Both offer a nice weightier steering feel, which is a good thing. It gives more of a direct response when you're going around the bends. Honda's been great at this for quite a while. I will say that Sentra for 2020 is now just as good as the Civic, in my opinion. Again, I test drove both of them. Tiebreaker is going to have to go to the stabilizer bars, and that's going to assist with handling as well. And here's why I say that front and rear stabilizer bars come standard on all Sentra trims. Front and rear stabilizer bars come standard on the sport trim level and up of the Civic. Therefore, those stabilizer bars are not available on the lower LX trim level for some reason. So therefore, I have to give the win here to the one that provides stabilizer bars on all trims, being the Nissan Sentra once again. Therefore, in the end, the Nissan Sentra wins this comparison five to four. And so if I had to add one more category to this comparison though, I would have to add exterior styling. Although exterior styling is somewhat subjective, I did want to mention this because the Sentra would win again in the exterior styling department, at least for me. It is wider and lower than the Civic, which makes it much more aggressive, much better looking vehicle. Civic width comes in at 70.9 inches. The Sentra width comes in at 71.5 inches. As far as ground clearance goes, 6.7 inches for the Civic, 4.9 inches for the Sentra, a much lower vehicle, more connected to the road for better handling. So that's pretty cool. Overall though, even though the Sentra won my particular comparison, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right pick for you. For example, if you wanted more power with the Civic's turbocharged engine, go that route because the Sentra doesn't provide one of those. Also better fuel economy with that engine, or if you wanted more rear leg room or more cargo space, the Civic beats the Sentra in all of those categories. So if you needed any of those, the Civic may indeed be the better pick for you. And so overall, I do hope you guys got something out of this video. Hopefully it helps you make a decision of your own. I've personally I personally owned three Honda Civics. I've never owned a Nissan Sentra. I've always loved my Civics. They've always gone over 200,000 miles with my top one going 230,000 before I ended up trading it in. So both are super solid vehicles, but nonetheless, let me know which one you would pick in the comments section below. I'm curious to hear your thoughts, which one you would actually pick, but in the end, do appreciate you guys watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you like, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. And I do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.